Welcome once again to Vlog Vlog. I'm your host. Today, I'm going to be talking about my experience at Tokyo Disneyland Resort. We stayed three nights at the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel and visited both Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea. I had an incredible experience, and Tokyo made World look like Six Flags Orlando. In fairness, Orlando may have the better roller coasters, and Anaheim may have the better fights, but in terms of cleanliness, food quality, value, and overall experience, Tokyo is on an entirely different level. Who knew that the best Disney exec works for a Japanese railroad company? I'll do my best to keep the comparisons at a minimum, and I knew it's gotten bad, but I didn't realize how bad until I went to Tokyo. I also want to apologize in advance if I run out of B-roll. This review was secondary to our main vacation, and I planned on doing a 5-minute video that I planned on releasing about 5 months ago. So, um, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about why Americans might not want to visit Tokyo Disneyland. The number one reason is pretty obvious. It's in Japan. Japan is awesome, but it's not the easiest place to get to, and intercontinental flights are expensive and they're very, very long. I went so crazy on the 15-hour flight home, which was over 24 hours if you count all of my connecting flights, that I watched some 5-hour DSP interview after my flights kept getting delayed and one more delay would have pushed me over the 30-hour mark. But they do have an anime planes. Now, this should go without saying, but the people there speak Japanese and everything is written in Japanese, so it can make it hard to get around. But they do have some nice toilets, like everywhere. The Japanese toilet is a default in Japan. However, another thing to consider is that they don't always have free Wi-Fi. So you either need to buy a SIM card or you need an expensive phone plan that has international data to get around. The lack of free Wi-Fi also applies to the parks. Since they don't have Wi-Fi in the parks, you will need data if you want to visit the parks and to get into certain shows and attractions. Okay, now that we talked about all the reasons why it's not practical for Americans, let's start talking about Tokyo Disneyland Hotel, and then we'll get around to talking about the parks. Tokyo Disneyland Hotel is far nicer than anything from D Disney's domestic offerings except without some of the amenities that Americans have come to expect from a deluxe Disney hotel. So that means no workout center, no business center, and no quick service. To put it in Disney dork, it's nicer than the Riviera, but priced like the Caribbean beach. However, it does come with a lot of nice stuff that you can't get domestically. So not only does the room come with a crazy Japanese toilet, they also provide you with a toiletry kit, toothbrush, slippers, and pajamas, in addition to their exceptional service. They will take your baggage up to the room, you cannot borrow a cart, and they do not accept tips. Someone that I know kept trying to tip them and, well, they kept freaking out the staff. The beds are comfortable, but they're also quite small. I'm six foot two, and I was able to fit in one myself but I think one American per bed may be the maximum. Japanese sizes are quite a bit different than American sizes. Our room came with four beds, two normal beds, a trundle bed, and an alcove bed. The hotel has a gift shop, a grocery store, an upscale restaurant, and a buffet restaurant. There's also some rooms that can be rented out for weddings. The gift shop has some exclusive things that you can only get there, including a bag that you can only buy if you're a guest staying at that hotel. Each of the three deluxe hotels have their own exclusive bag, so collecting them all can be quite expensive. I got one for my niece, so that means she's better than you. We ate at the buffet restaurant for dinner. It had a mix of meats, Asian foods, and some really good resorts. Overall, it was awesome and it came out to 40 bucks which isn't cheap, but is $22 less than what you'd get for a buffet at Orlando. So you're paying a lot less and getting much better food. I mean, the Orlando buffets suck compared to Tokyo. Sorry, not sorry. 
There's also two little gardens, which are really cute, and a pool that's only open during the summer. I think it may be an added cost, but I don't know. It was really cold when we were there. I know it's hotter than the surface of the sun right now, but this was five months ago. What makes Tokyo Disneyland Hotel so special is that it's feet from Disneyland and the monorail to Disney Sea. It's not as close to a park as Maricosta, which is inside Disney Sea, but it's as close to Tokyo Disneyland as you're going to get without illegally sleeping inside the park, which might get you a free stay at a Japanese jail cell. Well, there may be Japanese toilets there. I don't know. I paid to get at the to stay at the Disneyland Hotel. Please don't commit crimes. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed my stay at the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel. I'd love to stay there again one day, but next time maybe we'll check out Miracosta, which is more expensive and sells out really, really fast. On our first park day, we were very jet lagged, but that didn't stop us, or at least it didn't stop me. My fiance went to bed early both nights while I partied with Mickey-san. By virtue of staying at the hotel, we got a 15 minute head start of the rest of the guest, which doesn't sound like much, but it helped us out quite a bit. Disney dork tip, lines for the top attractions at Tokyo close before the park closes. So if the park closes in 50 minutes and there's a 45 minute wait, then the line will probably close sometime within the next five minutes, if it hasn't done so already. Also, I paid for the priority pass for everything that I could. It's an extra $15 to skip the line. The flight was 15 hours. I'll pay, I'll pay for both of us. You can only do this once per day per ride. Uh, for the Disney parks enthusiasts, Tokyo Disneyland is both familiar and foreign. They have a lot of similar attractions, but often with a Japanese twist. Like they have a tiki room, except it stars Stitch and there's no tiki room song, which sounds blasphemous to Americans, but it somehow works. I had no idea what they were singing, but the kids there were having a great time. When it comes to face characters, I was kind of expecting Japanese actors, but they opted for Americans who couldn't really communicate with the kids, but the children's smiles are pretty universal. What's so impressive about Tokyo Disneyland is how clean the park is when you compare it to Orlando and Anaheim. Tokyo is celebrating its 40, 40th year in 2023, but it looks like the place just opened yesterday. The attractions are all meticulously maintained, and I can't empathize, empathize that enough. While the Orlando version of It's a Small World has had some visual mold on the boats, the Japanese version looks like the paint just dried. Perhaps the best example of how well-maintained attractions are at Tokyo compared to Orlando is Splash Mountain, which is older than Orlando's by one day. So the last time I was in Orlando, the animatronics were in disrepair and it looked quite dirty. Tokyo's version still looks immaculate. I was completely shocked by how good everything looked. It looked like the attraction just opened and that's the same for pretty much everything at Tokyo. While we're talking the attractions, they have the best Disney attraction that I've ever been on, Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast. It's hard for me to put into words how good it actually is it's a trackless ride that retells the story of Beauty and the Beast. It may be less advanced than something like Rise of the Resistance, but it looks better. Everything works. And it feels Disney. It's everything that I've ever wanted out of a Disney attraction. It's perfect. It seems like the general rule for attractions at Tokyo is that everything is in Japanese, unless there is a particular attraction song. Then it might be be in English, maybe. One attraction in particular that's totally confusing for a Westerner is their version of Jungle Cruise. I had no idea what they were saying, but from what I could gather, they were playing it completely strict, which I think was the original intent of the ride before they added all the puns in Orlando and Anaheim. Finally, let's talk about the food. So this meal looks pretty good, right? It's at a sit-down restaurant in Tokyo Disneyland, and we didn't need a reservation. Guess the price. 
Remember, this is at a sit-down restaurant at Tokyo Disneyland. It cost $15. $15! It was so good, and it was less expensive than the quick service at Docking Bay 7. I just couldn't believe it. Overall, Tokyo Disneyland is absolutely incredible. The park is small, but it's filled with attractions instead of gift shops. We weren't able to see everything, but we still had a great time. Now let's talk Tokyo Disney Sea. To get to the park, we had to use a monorail, which instead of a decaying theme park ride, is set up like a mode of public transportation. We were given a free day pass as part of our stay, but normally you'd have to buy a ticket. It's super cute with Mickey's everywhere. The park itself has a few different lands. To see some of the bigger shows, including fireworks, you have to request a ticket from the app. The big original attraction is Journey to the Center of the Earth, which is freaking awesome. Now, from a purely technological perspective, it uses the same ride vehicle as Test Track, but it does so in a totally different way. They use a series anima animatronics and speed for a purely thrilling ride. It's really fun, and the anima ending animatronic is the most impressive one that I've ever seen at a Disney park. But let's talk animatronics for a second. So Tokyo's animatronics are less advanced than some of their American counterparts in that there's less points of articulation, but the focus on the animatronics is making them look good. There's less articulation points, but since there's less to go wrong, everything works. And the faces, while in some points are pretty stationary, it's not noticeable at the speed you're moving unless you're a crazy person like me and trying to figure out how everything works. One attraction that completely shocked me was the Sinbad attraction. It was literally a walk-on. I knew nothing about it, and I expected it to be a fairly simple and uh, not very good. Instead, it had a story that I couldn't understand, an original song, and ridiculously huge animatronics. It was just so well-made and a stylized attraction, and I had no idea that it even existed. I mean, it's like their version of the Donald Duck ride at, at Epcot, except they put an, an extraordinary amount of effort into it. Their version of Tower of Terror showcased another difference between the American and the Japanese parts, which is safety. So, in the original Tower of Terror, the restraints go over the waist. In Tokyo, it goes over the shoulder as well. So, it may not be as thrilling, but it is more secure. However, by being more secure, it's also less, less likely that a larger guest will be able to fit, which is a theme for Tokyo. In other attractions, they also added things like spacers, both in between guests and in between the legs, like in Splash Mountains. So it's safer, but it's also a tighter fit. I'm fairly tall, but I was still able to fit in everything. Just keep in mind that just because you can fit in, on an American version of a ride, that doesn't mean you'll fit on the Japanese one. Another difference is that there is no ADA in Japan, so the parks would be much more difficult to get around for guests who need a wheelchair. I don't know if EVs are allowed, but I didn't see one at all during my trip. Disney Sea, in particular, could be particularly difficult for some guests to navigate since there's a lot of hills and steep steps. It wasn't a problem for us. I mean, I like running upstairs, but I think it's worth mentioning. For the kids, they have an indoor section that's based on The Little Mermaid. It has a few attractions, a food court, a musical show, and a gift shop. It's pretty cute for a little area, and there's a few attractions on the outside as well. The main entrance area of the park is where they do the fireworks and have a show. They weren't able to do the fireworks at all while I was there due, due to the high winds. Overall, I really enjoyed the attractions and the different islands, with an with the opening of a new port in the near future, Disney Sea is about to add even more cool stuff to an already solid lineup. I think it's going to be Frozen, Tangled, and Peter Pan. Uh, the food is also really good here too, and everything about this park is just so incredible. The only sort of negative thing that is that it's kind of hard for English speakers. The cast members have little cards to help. Again, you're in Japan, and we did our best to communicate, and it, it all turned out all right. While it's a little difficult to communicate with the cast members, 
They're the best that I've seen from Disney. They're all nice. Their costumes are all meticulously maintained and they have a professional professionalism about them that's been somewhat lost from their American counterparts. Overall, Disney Sea is really fun and a unique park experience. From the unique attractions to the Japanese spin on classics like Tower's Terror, which has a unique story that has nothing to do with the Twilight Zone. It's just a really cool park, and I feel very blessed to have been able to experience it. So I'm a huge Walt Disney fan and a huge Disney Parks fan. I'm obsessed with the parks to the point that I made a 50 years commitment to them and bought into Disney Vacation Club. Everything that's wrong with the parks domestically simply does not exist in Tokyo Disneyland. Every frustration that I have with domestic leadership does not exist in Tokyo. If Josh really wants to know how to fix Disney World and Disneyland Anaheim, just look at Tokyo Disneyland and do that. You don't need the expensive Japanese toilets, but keep the parks clean. Maintain the rides, support your cast, serve food that tastes good, all at reasonable prices, and the families will return. I'm just so jealous of what they have in Tokyo. Toshio Kagami has created such a wonderful park that I think even Walt Disney himself would be jealous. It's just that good. I went into it wondering if Tokyo Disneyland was overrated, but that couldn't be further from the truth. If anything, it's underrated, and Josh Demaro and Bob Iger should be embarrassed. Disney magic is not dead. It's alive and well in Japan. So those are just my thoughts on Tokyo Disneyland Resort. I paid for everything out of pocket. We had to figure it out out on our own, and I did not receive any special benefits or discounts. This should also not be considered an endorsement of any of the aforementioned products. This is just based on my experience. I'm just an old guy just learning how to make videos on his Apple Macintosh, so there's no reason to take anything that I said seriously. He's not important! Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.